Well, it's obvious to everyone that driving a gasoline sports car is much more polluting than walking. How can they do it? The era of fossil fuels is over. This is one of the key building blocks. The future fuels and the take-up of electric vehicles driven by Australians' choices. But what about electric cars or the gasoline ones? Since there are a lot of controversies about it around the world, but nobody has a clear opinion about them because the answer is not very clear. Well, first of all, thank you for being interested in such an important topic. I hope you actually learn something new and at the end of the day, you can make your own conclusions about this topic without any preconceptions. In this video, we're going to discuss the main points related to the CO2 emissions or any other emissions of EV versus ICE. So stay tuned and try to look at the bigger picture. But what about production? And when I talk about production, I mean the statistically average car. Since emissions from the vehicle production vary greatly depending on the type of car, its size, brand, etc., we will use the average of analyzing many study reports, which state that manufacturing an average ICE car requires around 7 tons of greenhouse gas emissions. This is more or less the same for EVs, just have in mind that we are speaking about the production of the car itself and we are not taking the batteries into account. Including the production of the batteries, which require around 8 tons of CO2. Uh, taking into account that the smaller batteries require around 3 tons and the bigger batteries require around 12 tons of CO2 while being produced. So yes, unfortunately, manufacturing an electric car produces more emissions. However, let's not forget that these numbers are just statistics and the actual numbers can vary greatly if we take any specific car. For instance, the production of a high-end SUV could add up to 35 tons of CO2 emission, while for sure we can find an electric car which production requires comparatively as little as 6 tons of CO2 emissions with the small battery included. Secondly, let's talk about the production of emissions in the vehicle. Some people believe that the production of EVs does not release any greenhouse gases and there are some speculations that whether burning fossil fuels in a car is much more better than at the grid station which is used to charge the EVs. So what is true and what is not? According to various sources, power stations are way more efficient at making power than car engines, even taking into account the transmission losses. Also, let's not forget that electricity could be produced by renewable resources which nowadays makes more than 20% of total energy consumption in Europe. But let's speak about the numbers. According to statistics, an average gasoline vehicle creates about 5.19 tons of CO2 if we assume that average driving distance per year is about 19,000 kilometers, as in for USA. In addition to CO2, cars produce methane and nitrous oxide from the tailpipe and hydrofluorocarbon emissions from leaking air conditioners. But these gases are small in comparison to CO2. However, the impact of the emissions is important because they have a higher global warming potential than CO2. Speaking of electric cars, on average, they produce around 2 tons of CO2 per year in the USA. So now, let's add the carbon for car production to the annual emission and we multiply it by the number of years. So in this time, an average electric car is already producing less CO2 than an average ICE car. Of course, it varies depending on the battery of the car, the energy source, I mean the electricity production, as well as the type or size of the car. You can also add up an extra battery production in case your battery expires, which should last at least 8 years. But even that would not change the fact that the amount of greenhouse gas emissions created by the EAV will be lower than the one created by gasoline cars. Thirdly, let's talk about the maintenance of cars itself. Well, EVs are far more easier to maintain because there are fewer parts in an EV. There is also absence of brake oil or engine oil and that makes it easier for EVs to maintain than a conventional gasoline car. However, while the batteries in electric drive vehicles are generally designed to last for the expected lifetime of the vehicle, some manufacturers offer 8 or 10 year warranties for their batteries which would mean that the additional production of the battery would create again those 8 tons of CO2 on average. With modern technology and uh, new recycling processes being developed, 
it is likely that in the future, the amount of CO2 being released by recycling batteries is going to be significantly reduced. However, studies show that electric vehicles require less amount of CO2 to be recycled than gasoline vehicles. Unfortunately, at the moment, we don't have enough data to prove that the impact of the batteries of electric vehicles and that of gasoline vehicles is very different. And number four, vehicle recycling and disposal. Normally, we don't think about what happens after our car's life ends. Although, it is estimated that of the CO2 emissions produced over a car's lifespan, 5% comes from its disposal. Fortunately, junkyard pileups are becoming much smaller than what they were in the past. Around 80% of cars today can be refurbished and can be recycled. Given that there are about 12.1 million cars that are recycled every year, which has led to a 30% reduction in the greenhouse gases. Full recycling gives about 34% lesser emissions of greenhouse gases around the globe. Sadly, landfills are full of items that could have been recycled and weren't. The waste contains toxins that leach out, polluting the soil and groundwater. Also, gasoline, oil and other toxic chemicals are often found with old cars, which sometimes cause explosions and hazardous smoke. And since the consumption of a typical vehicle has changed drastically in recent years, more plastic materials are incorporated because they are lighter and more fuel efficient. The average vehicle is assembled from about 10,000 parts, of which there is a big number of different materials. And the landfills filled with these non-recyclable materials means that when they are compacted, oxygen is released, producing methane. And as we know, methane is one of the greenhouse gases that impacts our environment. However, there is no much proof to show that the recycling of electric vehicles and gasoline vehicles has much comparative difference, except with the lithium battery. To conclude, the effectiveness of an EV largely depends on the country's production of electricity. To say that driving an EV in Europe, which claims to be the first climate neutral continent, could be far more better than driving the same EV in other continents. Also keep in mind that the choice you make about renewable resources and batteries is far better. But yes, electric vehicles are not a panacea for climate change and it's not something that is going to save the planet. But however, if you are going to make a decision, it's best to make one that is environmentally friendly. Thank you for listening and watching. Please like and subscribe. For more information, visit us at eumotors.live. See ya! See ya.